So today was a significant day in this offseason because it was the official press conference for the Liars luncheon. And that is, of course, the Baltimore Ravens pre-draft presser where they answer a lot of questions about the roster, about the draft. Uh, in this particular presser, they did both of those. They answer questions about Rashad Bateman and Adafi Away's fifth-year option, Andrew Voorhees with the potential that he has to start on the offensive line. And they covered a lot of different stuff that we are going to get into in just a few seconds. Before we do, make sure you subscribe. And turn your notifications on and run them likes up on this video. I appreciate y'all coming through as always. But without further ado, Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh, they had a whole lot to say. And I had to take my notes for this one. So Eric DaCosta said yesterday, he said from 9 to 6. So 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So all day, a full work day. He said they had been looking at offensive linemen. They had really been doing their homework on it. He said that by the end of this week, they'll know well, they'll know uh, who they're going to draft at pick 30. So, again, this is the Lions Luncheon. So a lot of this talk that they do at this press conference is business. It's business. There may be some truths in there, but a lot of it is just putting certain stuff out there, uh, giving certain responses, because they're not going to come out and say, oh, yeah, well, this is what we're going to do in the draft, and this is our plan for the draft. No, nobody's going to come out and say that, because you got to strategize this thing. So with this first part, when he said that by the end of this week, they'll know who they're going to draft at pick 30. To me, that let me know, like, hey. And Eric DeCosta, as, as y'all know, he's always open for business, especially when it comes to getting even more draft picks. That let me know that, um, one, one, they could know who they're going to pick at 30, but at the same time, he's like, hey, if y'all come with the right offer, if y'all come with the right trade offer, hey, I'll be willing to trade down, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, somebody asked him, where do you think you are at outside linebacker? Uh, as far as the veterans, as far as the young guys, because you got some first, or some, excuse me, some second and third year players, uh, and he said we were excited to bring back Kyle Vinoy, uh, and he said it's great to have a veteran in the room, and he said the younger guys they got potential, uh, and he's excited for them to reach their potential this year. Uh, and that is a big thing that the Baltimore Ravens do have right now. He described it perfectly, potential. Uh, we haven't quite seen the potential from all the young guys. Uh, some of it's due to opportunity. Some of it's due to injury. And some of it's due to just hasn't clicked all the way yet. Um, opportunity, that would be Tavius Robinson. Tavius Robinson, he's just behind so many people on the depth chart last year. So it was understood why he didn't get many opportunities. Injury, obviously, David Ajabo. Hopefully he can stay healthy this year because when he's healthy, he's produced. Uh, and just for it, just not clicking all the way yet uh, has been Adafe away uh, and we're going to talk about him in a little bit uh but anyway is nine picks a number that you want to be at uh how much value do you put on the fifth year option now, adc said he likes the idea of having more picks and says that there is an advantage of having that extra year when it comes to players with the fifth year option now uh he was asked about picking up bateman in a ways fifth year options like what's going down with those because the deadline's coming up because it is coming up in I want to say either, I forget when it's coming up, but within the next couple of months. But Eric DaCosta, he said that uh, we're about a month away from making that decision. So soon, soon. But he said we'll talk more about that after the draft. Now, it's hard to really gauge where he's going at with that because we remember with, um, with Hollywood. Remember with Hollywood Brown? They were like, oh, yeah, we anticipate picking up Hollywood Brown's fifth year. I'll never forget. They said that, that we anticipate picking up Hollywood Brown's fifth-year option. Yeah, we, we, we anticipate doing that. Then, boom, traded on draft night. So, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, this is something I just, I really don't know. I mean, for a lot of this stuff, we, we, we just don't know. We'll have to see it for when it happens. But for this, I don't know what to think. I, I really don't know what direction these Baltimore Ravens are going to go in with either of these two players' fifth-year options because it's just – it's super hard to tell. Uh, but continuing, uh, EDC said that this is his 20th year running the draft. That's a long time. And then when he said this, he said the, the, his first year was the Mark Clayton draft. And I was like, oh, man. A lot of us are old. We are old. Because I remember Mark Clayton. But anyway, he said that uh, Joe Ortiz had been with him for 19 of those years. Because uh, somebody asked him, like, oh, how is it without Joe Ortiz in the building? Because now he's, of course, the GM of the Chargers. Um, he said that uh, he doesn't see, Eric DeCosta said he doesn't see a challenge with picking early versus picking late in the draft. 
Uh, and somebody asks, are any offensive linemen currently on the roster ready to step in right now? Because that's been a question that a lot of us have been uh, wondering. Because you got guys like Daniel Filele, you got Pat McCarry, you got Ben Cleveland, you got some other guys too. But Hobbs answered this one. Hobbs stepped in and he gave one of them Hobbs answers. He said, he said, absolutely. The best player is the player who plays the best. Little John Harbaugh over here giving us one line is giving us some quotes. Uh, but he said those guys are going to be competing with whoever comes in here. Now, back to his, his one line, um, the best player is the player who plays the best. What he was saying, and because he, he broke that down, which I appreciated. Uh, he said it's not always about the best player, but it's about the, the one who's playing the best. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but still, I did appreciate him going that bit of extra mile to explain exactly what he was saying. So basically, you could have somebody who may be expected to be it could be a veteran and this veteran is expected to be a starter at whatever position it might be but then you may have a rookie or a second year guy young guy come in and they may be playing better than that veteran is playing so john harbaugh is basically saying like oh no the then the second year guy they're better they're the better player than the guy who's expected to be the better player but anyway i'm um, continuing he said uh they were asked where is andrew Voorhees at right now as far as his status like what's going on with him Eric DeCosta said that he sees potential for him to be a starter at guard. And he went through the whole story about how he drafted Andrew Voorhees. He said, I, I, I did it for y'all. That Those of y'all that cover the team and stuff. He said, because y'all thought y'all were done for the day. Y'all thought we had signed off and y'all thought it was a wrap. But I was watching and I said, you know what? Let, let me give them some more work. So he jumped back in the draft and made a trade with Andrew Barry uh, from the Browns. And he said, usually we don't do many in division trades like that, but Andrew Barry was more than happy to do it. And I was happy to do it. And we made it happen. And they went and drafted Andrew Voorhees. And he talked about how, uh, had he not been hurt, then he would have been drafted a lot higher. And, and I know all of y'all more than aware of that already. So we'll see. We'll see. Time is ticking. Um, EDC also said the draft is the best way to build your team, especially from a financial standpoint. Uh, and he said last year they had tremendous depth. Yes, they certainly did. And he said now the challenge is doing that again and a lot of the young guys really stepping up to help fill uh, those depth roles. And then, of course, possibly some starters, too. He said they love to add a talented corner at some point in the draft, whether it's in the first, second or third round. Um, now, this question I did really appreciate because this has been a question that a lot of us as Ravens fans uh, have wondered at different times throughout uh, the tenor of the Baltimore Ravens, especially uh, under Lamar Jackson, but really a lot of other times too. But certainly since Eric DaCosta, he's been the general manager since 2019. Uh, there have been a lot of times where we've questioned, are the Baltimore Ravens really this? What is that? Well, the question was, uh, with you being one game away from the Super Bowl last year, are the Baltimore Ravens really all in as far as 2024? And that all-in question, I, I, I love it because actions speak louder than words. Because Eric DeCosta said, if you're not all-in, then you're all-out. Another one-liner, shout-out to him. He said, we're all-in every year, and that's what we all expect, the coaching staff, the players, the fans. He said, that's what we expect. And there have been times under this current regime, under his regime as GM, where it hasn't really felt like they were all-in. Last year, it certainly felt like, they were all in 2021. Uh, that felt like they were all in, too, but everybody got hurt. Uh, so they were all out. But this year, um, and I've said it before, I feel like Eric DaCosta, there's no room for error. There's no room for, like, mistakes when it comes to building the roster this year because you have some significant holes on the roster. Um, and we'll see how he patches those holes up, but it's going to be fun. Uh, Eric DaCosta, he talked about this, too, because a lot of Ravens fans have been frustrated with how the Ravens have been moving this offseason. They said it's very, very slow. Like, what's going on? Eric DaCosta said this. He said they're in the same place right now, roster-wise, that they were around this time last year. Uh, and he said a lot of the guys on the roster were guys that, from last year, a lot of guys guys ended up getting signed in August. Uh, so he said they, they ain't tripping right now, basically. Uh, and he said the destination is September, not May. And that's a good point. Uh, I got to do a little bit of fact checking to see if that's accurate. Because um, obviously he did get Jadavian Clowney late in the offseason, got Ronald Darby late in the offseason, got Kyle Vinoy after the season had already started. They were a couple weeks into the season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for enough guys, they did get signed later on. Um, so, yeah, basically just that's a message to everybody for, from Eric DaCosta saying, Chill out. 
relax. Even though I know us as Ravens fans, we don't chill out and we don't relax at all. Uh, but we did get the message. Now, uh, he was also asked, where does the patience and that philosophy come from? Like, how, how are you so patient as far as in, in waiting till later on to, to sign different guys and whatnot? How, how did you get so patient? And Eric DeCosta said, I'm not a patient person at all. But he did say he learned it from Ozzie Newsom, who was very patient. Uh, and he said that the Baltimore Ravens, they got to learn to pounce when an opportunity presents itself for the franchise to get better. And it's funny, somebody also asked a question about, um, they were like, oh, well, last year, uh, you made the announcement of Lamar Jackson's contract on uh, draft day. Uh, but does this offseason and going into the draft, does it feel like a lot lighter for you uh, as far as like the status of everything right now? And, and Harbaugh was like, hey, well, hey, we, we got two weeks. It could still make one another big announcement. Something could happen. So I said, I'll see you, Harbaugh. Don't don't tease us like that. Don't 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 troll us like that. Even though Eric Lacoste, hey, he pretty much said the same thing because uh, I think it was Jeff Zrebic. He asked, "Do you anticipate any moves being made over the next couple of weeks that could impact your prominent needs heading into the draft?" And EDC said, "You just never know. If the phone rings, maybe there's a move to be made." But he said that Kyle Vannoy was one of the last things on his checklist trying to get that done. I don't know that we'll do a lot over the next couple of weeks besides the draft board. Sly is luncheon. So, hey, there's going to be lies in here. There's going to be some truths in here. And it's up to you to decide what you believe. Um, but based on that, I think they ain't done yet. Shout out to Marcus Peters. Um, but I, I could see them making, I, I'm going to say, mm, draft is in a couple of weeks. What is like the 28th, something like that? Um, I'm going to go, oof. I'm going to go, they make at least two more moves, two more additions. You know what? I'm going big. Well, I mean, for this offseason, it's been really slow, so this really wouldn't really be big. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go. They make three more moves. They make at least three more moves, three, three more transactions, whether it's two signings in a trade, three signings. I say they making three more moves. Oof. That sounds crazy saying that out loud, but y'all know I'm crazy. So that's what I'm rolling with. Three more moves. You, you heard it first here. It's there. It's documented in this video, and it ain't going nowhere. Now. The last question, um, well, the last question that I took notes on, uh, this was a good question, too. And I think it came from my guy, Cordell Woodland. Shout out to him. He said, is the plan to develop Malik Cunningham as a quarterback or, or like what's the plan with him? And Harb said that that remains to be seen because he's developmental as both a quarterback and as a wide receiver. That's interesting. Um, I know that he, he's, he's very raw right now, but um, mm. Those are two very different positions. Those are two completely different positions. And for me, I, I, I don't know what Malik Cunningham wants as a player. They obviously brought Josh Johnson back to be the backup quarterback, and Malik Cunningham is there right now. Too. And there's some players that just, hey, whatever I got to do to get on the field, I'm willing to do it. There are other players that will ha I'm sure every player has that mindset, but then at the same time, there, there could be a player that, hey, if you want to be a quarterback, if I want to be a quarterback, I'm going to be a quarterback. I ain't playing all the positions. So I, I don't know what Malik Cunningham is or what he wants to do. So I can't speak for him, but I would hope that if he wants to be a quarterback, if he wants to continue to play the quarterback position and develop there, I would hope that the Baltimore Ravens would go that route. Um, so because when you start flip flopping, then it just it goes downhill quick. And, and I mean, recently, the, the, well, the quarterbacks that we've seen go from quarterback to receiver. Um, oh, the guy who was on the Texans, and I think he went to Ohio State. I cannot remember his name. I know that. I know y'all gonna come through. I know y'all gonna come through. He played quarterback at Ohio State, I believe. Yeah, and, and he went to the Texans. He played quarterback for them. Uh, there was also I cannot remember none of these guys' names right now. There was also a quarterback on the Raiders. Uh, he started off as a quarterback, then he switched to receiver. Uh, I cannot remember his name right now either. It's frustrating, but I know y'all got me, and I love y'all for that. There was also a quarterback. This wasn't recently or anything. Really, none of these guys were recently, but there was also a quarterback on the Baltimore Ravens, Keenan Reynolds from Navy, I believe. I think he went to Navy, but he was a quarterback in college. Then they tried to transfer him to wide receiver, and it just it didn't work out. So with Malik Cunningham, I just hope that he gets to play whatever position that he 
wants to play. But yeah, this last luncheon it had uh, some significant updates that we got, and we got to get them directly from the Baltimore Ravens, and it's always nice when we can hear directly from them. Um, but what did you take out of this Liars Luncheon? What information did you gather from it? What do you think is the truth? What do you think is a lie? And what do you expect? Let me know in the comment section, team. Keep it clean.